morning, our online worshipers. Thank you for coming again to Sunday school today to learn at the feet of Jesus. Before we go ahead to the lesson, let us quickly say a word of prayer together. Please repeat after me. Oh Lord, please heal all broken homes in the name of Jesus. Father, please heal all broken homes as we learn at your feet about broken homes today in the name of Jesus. We pray, Holy Spirit, the teacher of teachers, that you will be our great teacher today in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray today you will help us to have an understanding of your word and everything we are going to learn in this lesson today. We shall not be the hearer of your word alone, but you will make us dwellers of your word. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Thank you once again, our online worshiper. We welcome you to today's Sunday school. Our lesson today is on broken homes. Lesson 33, broken homes. But before we go ahead, let's quickly talk about what we learned last week. Last week, lesson 32, we learned about marital status marital status. Our Bible passage was Ephesians 5, 22 to 29. If you have forgotten, kindly read it again at home. Our memory verse was Ephesians 5, 33. Ephesians 5, 33. Last week, we learned about two lesson, two lesson outline. We had two lesson outlines. The first one was marital status. There we learned about marriage in coma. Marriage in coma. We learned three types of marriages. There are marriages in coma that are characterized by bitterness, resentment, dwelling on weaknesses, lack of poor communication, selfishness, and not being considerate. We saw another type of marital status, a marriage that is a dead marriage. The characteristics of a dead marriage we learned include lack of emotional attachment, no attraction to each other, no genuine concern for each other. And in this dead marriage, the husband and the wife are just cohabiting like strangers. Then, of course, we looked at a third type of marriage, the living marriage, where there's genuine love, where there's sacrifice, patience. And couples enjoy this company of each other, the company of each other. It is these characteristics of living marriage that we learned in our lesson outline too. We also learned that in a living marriage, the couples have the fear of God. They have the fear of God. So they have the God's kind of love, not just the sexual kind of love. They mutually support each other. They forgive themselves. They are kind to one another. They are committed to each other. They show appreciation and acceptance, and they spend quality time with each other. Last week, we concluded that the human ego must play down to the barest minimum so that we can enjoy our home and for our marriage to be a living marriage. Thank you. So in today's lesson, we will be studying the causes the effects and the remedies for broken homes. Of course, we'll know that for a home to be broken, it is the effect, the ripple effect of what we learned last week. Either the marriage was in a coma, has been in a coma, in a state of coma, or the marriage is already dead. When one of those factors are in place, then it can lead to broken homes. It can lead to broken homes. So that is what we want to study today. What can cause broken home, what are the effects of broken homes, and what are the remedies for broken homes. A home, a Christian home, is a family where Jesus is welcomed. Jesus is number one. Jesus is put first in the Christian home. Jesus is the center of the family. And they always pray together. The Bible says that uh, a family that prays together, stays together. So it is no not surprising that when you have a Christian home where the husband and wife pray together, they stay together, and so the, the marriage is intact. 
Families are the bedrock of society. When families fall apart, society falls into social and cultural decline. The plan of God for home is for them to remain united in the body and spirit. Psalm 133 1 says, Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. When there's unity, there's togetherness, and it is not easy for such a home to be broken. A broken home is a family in which the parents are separated or divorced. So they may not have been legally separated and um, divorced, but they are living, everybody is staying on their own. They are living apart. They are separated. Body, soul, and spirit, they are not together. They are in disarray. So many children are and estranged partners have suffered the consequences of a broken home. Of course, when there is a broken marriage, it is the children that will suffer the consequences of such broken home. So this has caused society and the church a lot of unrest. Of course, we can see it in the society. You can see children, even 10 years old, 8, eight years old, teenagers, on, sleeping under the bridges. The daddy has gone apart, the mommy has gone somewhere else. The father or mother probably married to another person and they left, they left the house. So in, the, in, the, in, the, in a situation where they want to survive, they begin to steal, they uh, graduate into harm robbery and all form of um, vices. So those are the consequences of a broken home. It is therefore necessary to examine the causes of broken homes and the remedy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our on online worshippers, before we go ahead, we want to say the memory verse together. Our memory verse today is taken from Mark 3, verse 25. And at the count of two, we are going to say it together. Mark 3, 25. One, two. And if a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. Again, I repeat... And if a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. That is what our memory verse is telling us. It is telling us that a house that is not united cannot be one. They cannot be in agreement. Two cannot work together except they be agreed. But we will see later as we go into the lesson that building a home in the Lord, a Christian home, is not by power, is not by might. Because Psalm 127 verse 1 it says, Unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labor in vain. So we are going to look at all that in our lesson outlines. But before we do that, let's look at our Bible passage. Our Bible passage is taken from Genesis chapter 25 verses 24 to 34. It is a very long one, so we are not going to read but we are all familiar with the story of Isaac and Rebekah and their children, Jacob and Esau. If we look at this story, this home, this home, if you remember that, yes, there were twins in our womb, and right from the womb, they are already rivals. And the devil you know, played more into the situation. The mother backed up um, Jacob, and they played and deceived their father Esau. So if we look at this very, very chapter, we see that this is an example of a divided home. The home of Isaac and Rebekah is a good example of a divided home. Why? If we look at the characteristics of a home that is divided, preference for one child over the other is a trait of a divided home. You know, selfishness is the reason for that preference for one child over the other. Look at Isaac. The Bible says, Isaac loved Esau. Why? Because he did eat of his venison. Isaac loved Esau because Esau goes into the farm to look for meat, to, to, you know, to do games, and then bring the, the meat home. And cook for his father Esau. So Esau loves him. He enjoys the meat. He enjoys the meat. 
The Bible records that but Rebecca loved Jacob because he is only. You know, we women, we like it when uh, men stays at home with us, when our children are with us, you know, staying uh, <laughs> beside us, talking together, telling stories, assisting us to carry one thing or the other. So because Jacob was homely, the mother loved Jacob. But we can see later that Jacob schemes and wins his brother's birthright by coercion. No. Jacob was going to be, I mean, Esau was going to be blessed by Isaac, his father. The mother knew it and tried to help Jacob to scheme his brother Esau. Even though Jacob schemed his brother, it wasn't with the help of his mother. It was the mother that actually connived together with him to scheme his brother and to deceive her husband. So both mother and child deceived their father. Esau also on the other side is very greedy. He gave up his birthright for a mere bowl of pottage. He could not control his you know, hunger. He could not control his mouth. There are lessons to learn from the home of Isaac and Rebecca. Lesson is that we should never covet another person's tents. Don't wish to take the place of another person. Place value on yourself. And again, have self-control. You should place value on your birthright rather than what you want to eat. No deed. You should have attitude for delayed gratification. Esau could not even fast. He wants the food now, now. And because of that, he just looked down on his birthright. And then Jacob took over just because of pottage. So we have to have self-control. Also, parents should be careful not to have preferences for a particular child over the other. Because when you do, it causes division in the home. It causes sibling rivalry. And when there's rivalry, there will be division. And when you, you, know, you, 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 you back one child over the other, definitely there's going to be a problem. So we have to be careful. So in our lesson outline one, we want to see what are the causes of broken homes? Some of them we already mentioned. And so together, my online worshippers, we are going to do this together. What are those factors that you think can bring about a broken home? One of them is cultural shifts. Cultural shifts. A decline of religion and morality. Departing from religion and moral is one factor. These days, everybody wants to do their own thing, their own way. You find children telling their parents that that's, that that's moral attitude is during your own time. This is how we do it now. The Gen Z, this is the way we do our thing. I know that in one way or the other, we must have experienced it in our home where children want to take their own stand so except you have truly raised the children in the way of the Lord and they have a solid foundation, they can be shifted by the enemy. So Colossians 2, 8 says, Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. After the tradition of men, after the rudiments of this world, and not after Christ." When we bring up children in the way of the Lord, at times when they mingled with friends in school, even in the church, because people come from different kind of homes, people have received different kind of you no know, no foundations. So they might want to copy their friends, their colleagues, and ah, this is the way they are now doing it. This is the way it is done. But have they have we made them to realize that because it is done this way? In the world now does not mean it is right and it does not mean that is what God wants the way God wants it that we have to please God rather than pleasing men we have to be godly rather than be worldly so that is one a wrong choice of marriage could also be the cause of the broken home 
Proverbs 21 verse 9 says, It is better to dwell in a corner of the house top than with a brawling woman in a wide house. You know, nowadays people want to get married and they, they feel that, oh, they already seen the flags, the red flags. They already seen that, oh, this person, I cannot tolerate this kind of attitude. It is beyond me. But sometimes they just feel that because the person is beautiful or handsome or because the person is rich or from a good, um, a rich family, you think you can change the person. But no, it won't happen. By the time they get married and after two or three years, they begin to see that, oh, it is even beyond what they have taught. And then they are unable to cope with each other. You have nagging wives or husband that loves to keep late nights that then go into drinking. We have seen situations where brothers pretend because they love a woman, they come into the church, pretend to be brothers, and then after marriage, the real them is out. The, the, the girl discovered that, oh, this man is, even drinks. He drinks, he smokes, he humanizes. So a wrong choice in marriage will end in broken homes because they cannot cope together. They cannot cope. The third one is negative influence of parents or friends, etc. Genesis 2.24 says, Therefore, a man leaves his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. That's on the side of the parents. Sometimes a wife or a man finds it difficult to separate from their parents. It could be either way. Don't say because the Bible says a man. A man is, can be used for a woman or a man. Sometimes it is the lady that finds it difficult to detach from her mom or from her dad. Sometimes it is the man that is the mother's boy. They find it difficult to separate. Separation does not mean that they should not relate. But it means that uh, the, 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 the parents will give them that distance to run their home in their own way. Of course, when, if they need any advice or any counsel, the couples are free to come to the parents to ask for their fatherly or motherly candid and uh, advice. But it is not as if the mother will go chucking her nose or the father will keep chucking his nose into the uh, young family's marriage. And we also have Proverbs um, 21, 9 that says, I mean Genesis 2, 24 that says, Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. Then Proverbs 13, 20 says, He that walk with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. We've talked about parents interjecting. We've talked about parents. What about friends? Some guys, some girls cannot do away with their childhood friends or with their mates, their colleagues. You know, they also bring all the baggages into their homes. So you find that every now and then, whatever happens in their home, they go to the, the friends to talk about it. Such a home will be broken at the end. So there has to be, you know, gap after marriage. Lack of genuine sacrificial love. Uh, is the man ready to lay down his life for his wife? Not as in dying but if it means that you know are you ready to love when you love a woman then you will not have anything happening to that woman you will not want to hurt the woman so also vice versa the woman will not want to hurt the man communication breakdown is another one matthew 5 37 but let your communication be yeah yeah nay nay for whatever is more than that commit evil they must know whatever happens. Quarreling will, uh, will come in once in a while because we disagree to agree. But when you allow the communication gap to, you know, to get widened, then the center will not be able to hold. If it occurs, has come to a situation whereby third party has to come every now and then to, to, know, to settle your quarrel each time you, you, you have a disagreement, then that home we head to destruction because people will be tired of coming to settle quarrel for you. Sexual unfaithfulness between a couple is also a reason for broken homes. Hebrew 13 4 says marriage is honorable in all and the bed undefied, but warmongers and adulterers God will judge. 
So we have to move faster now. Other factors include, include stinginess, meanness, or poor economic planning. First Timothy 6.10, we have to read it at home, for the love of money is the root of all evil. There are some women, there's nothing their husband will offer them that will be sufficient. But we have some men that are you know, playing their role below expectation. They are so stingy. They don't know how to take care of their wives. Preference for a child over another, like we read in our Bible passage of today. Then undue attachment to a job or other things than the family. We are not saying we should not do our work the way we're supposed to do. In fact, the Bible detests laziness and idleness. But when you cannot even create time to attend to your family and they feel lonely because of your job, then it is a problem. Worldliness, worldly pleasure, those who love the world and the things of the world, 1 John 2.15 is another cause. Another major cause is domestic violence. When you keep beating a woman or the woman keep beating the wife, one day the partner will pack his things and leave the house for you. Inadequate finance due to job loss. Women should learn to tolerate their husbands when they lost their job or when, there's no, when the whole thing is not working well. But a man should be hardworking. You should show that to your wife that you are actually making efforts to make money. Deceptive marriage is another point. Like for example, a man that knows that he cannot perform, he's in, he's, he has a fertility problem or whatever kind of erectile problem they call it. And you deceive the woman when you know you cannot do. There are some women also who have committed abortion and have no womb, and they deceive the man. In a true Christian uh, relationship, you open up to each other, and when there's agreement to go ahead with the marriage, you, you stand to pray together, and the Lord answers. Praise the Lord. So how can husband, wife, and children, what role can they play to prevent broken home? Response to that question can be found in Ephesians 5, 25 to 33. For example, it says, husband, love your wife as Christ loved the church. Love your wife, provide for your family. Be priest in your own home. That is the role of a man. Then the wife must respect or reference her husband and be a true helpmate. For the children, they must respect their parents in the Lord, help with the house chores, appreciate their parents also. Lesson outline two. What are the effects of a broken home? Some effects of a broken home, like we've mentioned earlier, include abandoning children and spouse. No one person will just pack his load one day and leave the house. Wife will walk out of the marriage. They will start living in a home and with strange men and women. Children will begin to suffer emotional stress. Children will lose interest in relationships. Such children will not even want to get married. Children are likely to exhibit antisocial behavior, stealing, fighting, raping, and all stuff. Society will begin to witness increase in crime rates. All that have been said, what can we do as remedy? What are the remedy for broken homes? Those who suffer the pains of broken home can apply the following uh, uh, instructions or advice. One, they, they should embrace the love of Jesus Christ through salvation. Romans 5, 8. But God commanded his love towards us in that while we are yet sinners, Christ died for us. If we love God and we know God, definitely it will be easier for us to be able to love our fellow men, to love our family, to love our spouses. Again, you commit everything to God in prayer because it's greater than any difficult situation. Jeremiah 32, 27 says, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? No. God can solve it. Even if the home is broken, God can mend it. Then you can ask God to make you a better person. Search yourself and ask God to create in you a clean heart, like Psalm 51, 10 says. Work on yourself. You know your weaknesses. You know the complaint from your partner. So work on it and begin to make amend. Seek help from other Christians. Go for counseling. Seek professional counseling. Learn to forgive and reconcile and re rest, uh, rest, uh, restoration will be your portion by the grace of, of God. Again, be patient to meet the need of your spouse. With patience, your, your spouse will begin to adjust and then everything will come back to normal. So, we have to be honest with ourselves. You know your weakness, you know your strengths. So, you work on your weaknesses. 
as your your spouse is complaining don't make it look as if the person is nagging don't make it look as if this is who i am and you have to take me line who can sink her no you have to keep making adjustments you have to adjust in your attitude so that with time you know your spouse can see that oh you are making effort to change there's no one that is perfect we are all striving towards perfection but with the love of christ with the help of christ you can see that you will get there you will get to a level where your spouse will look back and say ah this is my husband you understand we have parents where you have wives who were married to the people that were you know drinking and uh, fornicating committing adultery but after a while they give back they they give their life to christ and the wife can see the changes that ah, my husband no longer keep night ah, my husband has stopped drinking and there is a new life new home for them hallelujah so we have to be patient with each other communication is very very important we must have open communication no matter how terrible the situation no matter how terrible your offense have a line of communication keep a line of communication be ready to discuss it with your spouse and then you pray together ask god to help you to forgive each other and then you move ahead allow god to be the head of your home allow god because it is only with christ that your home can stand thank you so in conclusion broken homes can be described described as broken lives so you have to do all you can to make your family strong and united because a home that is divided against itself cannot stand and when there are cracks in the wall of your home then all sort of things will begin to enter cockroaches lizards snakes you know those are destroyers it is when there's a gap that the third party can come in to offer you an advice that is ungodly and from there you begin to discontinence each other so let's try to commit everything unto god because he's our helper god will help us even a broken home can be mended with the help of Christ. Job 14, 7 to 9 says, For there is a hope, there is hope of a tree, if it be cut down, that it will sprout again, and that the tender branch thereof will not cease. Therefore, there is hope for a broken home to be mended through the love of Christ. Thank you for coming to Sunday school. So let's say the closing prayers together. Repeat after me. Almighty Father, please keep our homes in your perfect love. Father, please keep our homes in your perfect love. Help us to do your will. Help us to love with the love of Christ. Help us to be united in the mighty name of Jesus Christ we have prayed. Amen. Thank you, our online worshippers, for coming to Sunday School. I pray that everything we have learned today will not stand in, uh, on the judgment day against us. I pray that everything we have heard and everything you are still going to read on your own will help you to adjust. And by the grace of God, you are going to have a united home in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you once again for coming. Please come again next week and bring somebody along with you. Thank you. Teachers, please round up in your classes. Teachers, begin to pray in your classes, please. Father, we thank you very much for today. Thank you for helping, to, helping us to learn about broken homes. Father, we pray that you will help us to make necessary adjustments so that our homes will continue to be united in your presence in the name of Jesus. For every home that is already broken or that is sick, Father, Lord, we pray you will heal such home and you will mend every broken homes in the mighty name of Jesus. For every home that is standing, that is living, we pray that the devil will not take advantage of such homes in the mighty name of Jesus. Through this lesson, Father, we shall not be guilty on the last day in Jesus' name. We commit our offering unto you, O Lord. Father, please accept us. Accept our offering in the name of Jesus. We pray, Lord, that this money will be used for the development of your work here on earth. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord, church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Aleluya. Hallelujah, can we be upstanding as we begin to reference our maker, the King 